As a true blue Manila girl, I know how exhausting city life can be. Every once in a while, we just need a breather from the hustle and bustle. Luckily, there are many beach destinations around Metro Manila where you can take a quick beach escape. Hey Beach Listers, this is Hannah from Philippine Beach List. Are you in need of a break from city life? Here are 10 beach destinations that you can visit that are only a few hours away from Manila. Before we begin, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get the latest updates on all things B. Beach lists, bucket lists, busting life in the city, and more. Weekend warriors will often make their way to Puerto Galera in Oriental Mindoro, Anawangin Cove in Zambales, and La Ia in Batangas. However, these places can get crowded, especially during the summer. But don't worry because there are a ton of beach destinations not too far from Manila. So, check these spots out. Just a note, some of these photos and videos are from our past travels. Once we revisit these destinations, follow-up videos will be in the works. So stay tuned and let's get back to the video. La Ia is one of the beach destinations in Matangas that has been a go-to for tourists. It is also one of the most developed with countless resorts of different types standing along its coast. Whether you're looking for a place to stay on a budget or even if budget isn't an issue, you'll find something for you. Thousands of tourists have enjoyed La Ia's long and wide stretch of sand, especially during the summer, and it remains a top choice for those who want to have a relaxing and comfortable getaway. It is also a popular destination for corporate events. Fortune Island in Nasugbu used to be the best kept secret among Filipino divers. The shipwrecked diving sites around the island made this a haven for underwater explorers. One of the dive sites here is the wreck of the Dutch warship Mauritius that sank in 1600. However, with a secret this beautiful, it's only a matter of time before it gets uncovered. Now this island, which used to be the location of an exclusive luxury resort, is also popular among campers and beach lovers. It only has a short stretch of sand and is generally rocky, but the imposing Grecian pillars and statues atop the island's limestone cliff are now favored as photo spots among tourists who visit. But Fortune Island is just one of the places you can visit in Nasugbu. Its shores harbor several beaches, with a few of them located in barangays Papaya and Kalayo. Nasugbu's jagged coastline cradles scenic coves with fair sand in its nooks and crannies. Some of these beaches you can check out are Layaglayag Beach, Kairaang Cove, Between Cove, and Hamilo Coast. When Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991, provinces that sat at its base got covered in ash. Among these is Zambales, where the volcanic ash covered the shores, creating extraordinary beaches. Multiple coves in San Antonio have become a unique tourist attraction and have attracted campers. These coves include Anawangin, Nagsasa, Talisayin, and Silangin, which all have ashen sand and agoha trees that resemble pine trees, resulting in a vibe that mixes Boracay and Baguio. Aside from beach bumming and camping, tourists can also visit nearby islands of Capones and Camara from these coves by hopping on a boat. Here's how you can get to Anawangin Cove or Nagsasa Cove. Board a Victory Liner bus to Iba or Santa Cruz Zambales and ask the conductor to drop you off at San Antonio Public Market. Ride the tricycle to Pundakit. Rent a boat that would take you to Anawangin or Nagsasa. Anilao has long been a destination for divers coming from Manila. Located in Mabini, it's only a 3-hour drive from the metro. It's also ideal for those who want to learn how to dive because there are multiple diving schools here that offer beginner courses. The underwater scenery here is breathtaking with a diverse range of marine wildlife in the area. 
If you're not into diving or if you're afraid of deep waters, you can actually skip Anilao and hop on a boat to Tingloy instead. This island municipality has some of the best beaches in Batangas, including Sombrero Island, Sepo Point, and Masasa Beach. Masasa Beach is probably Tingloy's best beach. Don't expect pearly white sand here, but its vibrant waves more than make up for this. Even from afar, Masasa Beach will surely grab your attention with its crystal waters that have a wonderful turquoise glow. Kalatagan is a popular beach destination because of its shallow waters and supple beaches. It's perfect for those who want to spend time just relaxing on the shore and taking a dip in the water. There are also many resorts to choose from in this town. Some of the most notable ones that are along the beach are Aquaria Water Park, Manuel Uy Beach, and Stilts Kalatagan Beach Resort. From these beaches, you can go on a boat tour and make stops at some of the islets off the coast. Some of the usual stops are Starfish Island and the Sandbar. And with Kalatagan being situated on a peninsula that juts out into the Verde Island Passage, which is bursting with marine life, its beaches are great spots for snorkeling too. Being located in a relatively obscure municipality did Malabrigo a favor. It may not be as popular to tourists, but it has managed to preserve its natural beauty and untouched state in exchange. Getting here can be a bit of a challenge, which may be a reason why not a lot of people make their way to this part of Batangas. The route involves zigzag roads along the mountainsides, but the pebble beach here makes it stand out against all other Batangas beaches. Its shore is covered with small to medium-sized gray and white cobbles instead of fine sand. Near the beach, you can also visit a beautiful lighthouse. Corregidor is a known historical place that played a huge part during the Japanese invasion. However, apart from its historical and strategic importance in the history of the Philippines, Corregidor also harbors a short, quiet beach. It's not just barracks and batteries that await tourists here. And although Corregidor's South Bank Beach does not have fine white sand, it's still good for a relaxing time during your trip to the island. Its shore is covered with what they call bloodstones. Now don't worry because there's no actual blood on these stones. These are medium-sized pebbles that are tainted with a red material that appears like blood splatters. Multiple activities are also available here for you to enjoy, including kayaking. Puerto Galera translates to Port of Galleons. The Spaniards gave this coastal settlement this name when they reached it in 1570 after crossing the Verde Island Passage from Batangas. However, Puerto Galera has always been a busy port area even before the Spaniards arrived. Its location makes it an ideal natural shelter for ships and boats. Located in Mindoro, you can reach Puerto Galera by riding a bus and hopping on a ferry if you're coming from Manila. It has been one of the most popular destinations for people from the city who want to spend some time by the beach. Its small coves stuck along its jagged coastline are perfect for swimming and other beach activities. Some of the beaches you can visit here are White Beach, Aninuan Beach, and Haligi Beach. But its beaches are not the only things that make Puerto Galera a worthy tourist destination. This coastal town is also a great diving spot. In 1973, it was declared as a Man and Biosphere Reserve of UNESCO, as it is one of the destinations in the world that has the richest marine biodiversity. The towns of Padre Burgos and Pagbilao encompass multiple islands that have white sand beaches. Some of the notable ones are Puting Buhangin and Dampalitan Island, but the most popular is Borawan. There are different stories as to how the island got its name. One of them is that Borawan came from the combination of Boracay and Palawan. This is because its beach is covered in white sand similar to Boracay and it is lined with towering karst cliffs reminiscent of the islands in El Nido and Coron in Palawan. However, don't expect the karst cliffs of Borawan to match those in Palawan. But with its proximity to Manila, this little paradise is worth 3-4 to four hour drive. 
Just try to avoid going during peak season since it can get really crowded, leaving the water murky. So how does one get to Padre Burgos or Pagbilao in Quezon? Board a bus bound for Lucena City and get off at Lucena Grand Terminal. Ride another bus to Unison and alight at QCRB Bank, Padre Burgos. Take a tricycle to Aplaya. Here, you can rent a boat to take you on an island hopping tour. Many might think that Subic is now a has-been when it comes to beaches near Manila, but it still has its charms. After all, it was one of the most popular go-to beaches near the metro back in the day. The coastal municipality of Subic offered an escape for many city dwellers over the years. It has many things that could make your dream getaway. Great resorts, the beach, and various shopping outlets. There may be newer and more popular destinations now that top Philippine bucket lists, but Subic still has plenty of attractions to compete. The Subic Bay Freeport Zone is heavy on ecotourism. They have guided treks, jungle survival tours, diving spots specifically for wreck diving, theme parks, sailing, adventure parks, and extreme water sports. And if nature is not enough to distress, go for retail therapy. Multiple outlet shops and duty-free shopping centers are located here in Subic. Verde Island is situated in the middle of Verde Island Passage, which is called the center of the world's marine biodiversity by a Smithsonian Institute study in 2007 due to its high concentration of marine species. From the mainland, the island can be reached by a 45-minute boat ride. Although it is a part of Batangas City, the island is not as commercialized as the rest of the city. This is why there are resorts on the island, but a number of the beach attractions here remain pristine, like Cueva Sitio and Mahabang Buhangi. Despite the beaches in Bataan being rocky or having beige to light gray sand, they are still very much scenic. Because of these beaches, the municipalities of Bagak and Mariveles have slowly become tourist destinations. Aside from the beaches here, you can also drop by Las Casas de Filipinas, the Acuzar Heritage Resort during your trip. Las Casas is a vast complex that has 27 Spanish-era heritage houses, also referred to as Bahay na Bato. And if you're really a nature lover, visit the Pawikan Conservation Center in Morong. They celebrate Pawikan Festival every November, but you can still visit the center any time of the year to learn more about the turtles. And that's it for this list of beaches near Manila. If you want to see more beach lists, other beautiful attractions in the Philippines, and everything you need to know about traveling around the country, Make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we have new videos. If you're on Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, give us a search. We are Philippine Beach List on all those platforms. You can also check out our blog, philippinebeaches.org. The Philippines has so many islands, it's honestly going to take a whole lifetime to visit each one. So that just means we better get counting. Again, this is Hannah. Join me again next time as we check another destination off our Philippine beach list. Bye!